So, it has been a long time since I was back on the batteries. Back when I was getting ready to bring the boat home, I realized I had an opportunity to do a bit of a unique test. That test was to bring all of the batteries up to 100% charge, and then I changed in the different BMSs, the six BMSs, the point at which the uh, balance current would kick in. At what voltage, when the pack was above that voltage, would it start balancing? to try to see how much of a difference it would make to parasitic losses. How quickly would it burn up the batteries sitting there doing nothing? This is important in a boat, not necessarily for me because I'll be living on my boat, but for other people, most people don't live on their boat or RV or whatever. And it's not uncommon to, when the season's over, turn everything off, pack it away, park it away, whatever you do with it, go away for six months and you don't come back to it until the next time the seasons are favorable. During that time, the batteries can discharge. So that was the test I got started. And I've been keeping a rough eye on the batteries, not super closely, but I checked them yesterday and I noticed a problem. This is BMS F. I don't remember what it was set to, but if you notice, you see how the red light is blinking, telling me the BMS is still on. I was going to check on the BMSs, oops, wrong one, and I noticed that BMSF wasn't showing up in the list. I tried turning it on. It did turn on, there it is. And it's gonna turn off fairly soon. Cell 12 is showing two volts. Everything else is 3.1 something. That's true for all of the other batteries. I'm really hoping it's a bad lead because if the battery cell has actually dropped to two volts, that battery's toast most likely toast. I bought four spares, so it's not the end of the world. So what I'm going to do now to try to see whether it's a bad lead or not is I'm going to um, take a voltmeter and check the individual voltage of all of the cells. I'm really, really, really hoping that cell 12 isn't really down to 12 volts. There has been absolutely no source of power coming into this battery for a very long time. Sorry, the lighting here is kind of crap, but I just noticed this and I wanted to get it on film. This is going to mark the end of the test. I'm going to have to start charging these things back up. For right now, I want to see if I'm truly boned or not. 3.19, 3.19, 2 .0. Nope, the cell is actually bad. Okay, well, one of the dangers of lithium cells is that if they drop below 2 volts, their polarity can reverse. So I have to pull this battery apart right now. I've got 96 cells across the six batteries, 16S times six. All of the others are still showing 3.1 something. So I'm gonna have to reach out to QSO and uh, see what they have to say. I don't know if it's safe to try to recharge it. I don't see if there's a point to recharge it because I'm not gonna trust it on the boat, obviously. Oh, well, it's disappointing, but it's a hell of a lot better that I found it here than I found it on the uh, boat. If this had been inside of the boat, it would have been a lot harder to pull apart. This also speaks to why I wanted to have so many parallel batteries. If this had happened on the boat, I would have lost one-sixth of my total range, my total propulsion bank capacity, which, while annoying, wouldn't be catastrophic. Sorry, you're probably only seeing my backside. Oh, frustrating. One of the things I do often say is a measure of a company isn't when things go well. A measure of a company is when things go wrong. So I'll reach out to QSL. I suspect I might be outside of the warranty. So even if they don't replace the cell, I can't really hold it against them. But we'll see. So a lot of people joined the channel since I last worked on batteries. Though, if you've watched any of the videos pretty much, you'll know that the whole plan from the beginning has been to convert my boat to electric. But the channel got its start when I was learning all of the battery stuff. The vast majority of the early videos were all about trying to learn about building batteries and electrical systems and charging and blah blah blah. Then, as the battery stuff got largely sorted out, the focus of the channel shifted towards getting the boat home, which it is now. Now, those two topics are going to come together. Now, what's interesting is, even though the cell voltage is down to two volts, it doesn't look like the, uh, there's any swelling. So I've got the bad cell out, and yeah, I do not see any swelling whatsoever. Visually, it looks perfect. Let me measure it again now that it's uh, out of the pack. 
Yep, 2.053. So I brought you back a lot sooner than I expected. So I brought you back a lot sooner than I expected. After I turned off the camera downstairs, I took a picture of the battery showing two volts and I sent it to my friend Andy, Off Grid Garage. To any of the people following me because of the sailing who might be considering your own battery stuff, anything to do with lithium battery, whatever, Off Grid Garage, he's the reason my channel got started. Brilliant, super in-depth channel. I showed him the, the fact that it was reading two volts, mostly just like, haha, look, I finally have a dead cell. And I mentioned that I was getting ready to toss it and replace it. And he said, no, you can totally save that. That's not a problem. It's like, it might have degraded capacity. So I'm gonna do a capacity test. But I thought at two volts, it wasn't safe to charge these. He was like, no, nope, should be good. So understanding that this is outside of the manufacturing spec, anything that happens now, totally on me. Liability here. If it goes below 2.5 volts or above 3.65 volts, continue using the cell at your own risk. But I put a lot of weight into what Andy says. And if he says it's safe, I'm gonna to try to salvage it. Now, I wanna take all of these cells and put them in parallel and charge them back up. But if I did that right now with this cell at two volts and all of these at 3.19 volts, thereabouts, this would start to suck a lot of capacity in. It, it would try to charge really fast, very high amperage, and I could potentially overheat something. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the iCharger X8. I know I can set it to be a, co a constant voltage charger. So I'm gonna set this to 3.2 volts constant voltage and charge this up until it's reading about 3.2 volts. During the discharge, it falls off extremely quickly, but the converse is true. As you charge it back up, its voltage will climb very quickly back up to 3.2 volts, assuming the cell is still good. Once this cell's voltage is close to the others, that's all I need. Now I can connect it. The balance current that's gonna happen when I connect this is based on the difference in voltage. So 3.12 to two volts, that's over a volt difference, or considering these are 3.2 volt cells, 33% higher, give or take. 35, because it's 3.2 volts. In any case, you get my point. So once I get this up relatively close, I can connect it in parallel. These will start discharging into it to balance them out, but I'll stick the charger on the far end and let the whole pack charge up. I expect this is gonna take a long time. Let's get started. Oh, and I should mention to anyone who might be new here, I have a very old video where I repurposed the power supply out of a server to power this iCharger to make, by my standards, a much, much cheaper bench power supply. Proper bench power supplies are fairly expensive and well, I just didn't want to spend the money, so I didn't. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty bad reason. These here are just sensing leads for the charger so it knows what voltage the cell is at. All right, this breaker is open now. Obviously, if these two touch, very bad day. This is definitely not a laboratory con conditions, but I'm not going to be pumping much current into this. I'm going to set it to a very low current. Like if I could set it to something like three amps, that's what I would do. Now, let's see if I can remember how to use this. Power on. This breaker is green, so it's safe. No, don't put 14 volts in there. Holy shillings. Actually, you know what? To be extra safe, I am disconnecting this for now. There we go. There he goes. Okay. Uh, you can't really see this, can you? Let me see if I can zoom in for you. I have no idea if that's visible on camera. 3.1. There, 3.2 volts, set. I'm gonna set the current. You know what, five amps should be fine. Do I want five amps? Five times 3.2. The answer is 16. 16 watts, that's nothing. Perfect, I want this to go slow. Okay, now I'm going to plug this in. Run program, yes, but not quite yet. Hopefully that makes it a bit easier to see on screen. I'm just gonna hang these from here like this because I don't have my little alligator clips. Two volts and, uh, right, I gotta turn on the breaker. Balance not needed, remove connection from balance port. Okay, I did say it's been a while since I used it. Now it's reading the two volts on the thing. Now it's saying connection error. Why are you not happy? Voltage match error, balance port sum is higher than Output. Oh, is it because this isn't connected? There we go. You can see the voltage climbing here. 2.1 volts, 5 amps. So now we wait. 10 watts is going in right now. 
That is not very much. But look at the voltage. It's already rebounded. This is reading 2.2 volts. This is reading 2.16. Not quite sure which one I trust more. I think I trust the BK Precision a bit more. But that's okay. Actually, no. The iCharger's whole job is... You no. Know, in any case. Oh, you know what? This is probably higher because it's just physically sitting there. Yeah, I trust this more. I don't trust this. In fact, I'm just going to take that off. I don't need that anymore. I'm impressed. I'd only... 10, now it's coming up on 12 watts. It's already at uh, 2.37 volts. This is recovering very quickly. It might not be dead. <laughs> 0.3 amp hour and I'm already almost at 2.5 volts. This recovered extremely quickly. Half an amp hour, not even half an amp hour. 2.5 volts. We're back into safe territory. The thing about lithium iron phosphate is that its voltage curve is so incredibly flat, except at the very end of charge and the very end of discharge. But the amount of energy stored in that voltage drop or voltage spike is terribly small. So much so that I think I'm gonna actually go back and reconfigure the BMSs to turn off at like 2.65 volts, 2.7 volts, and to turn off charging at like 3.4 volts. Um, I think I've currently got it to 2.6 on the bottom end and 3.55 on the upper end. I don't remember offhand, but there's so little power at those extremes. I don't see a reason to stress the battery. Anyways, now it's going to take a lot longer, I'm sure, to bring it up to 3 point something volts. All right, it's been charging for an hour and a half. After an hour and 28 minutes at 7.3 amp hours in, the battery's risen to 3.05 volts. I want to bump the current now. Okay, I'm going all the way up to 30 amps. This is a 32 amp breaker, so it should be fine. And now that the battery voltage is three volts, it should be able to take this pretty fine. I, it might've been fine from the very beginning, but I wanted to start slow. Hey, Kepler. You wanna say hi, Kepler? Meow. Kepler. Yeah, say hi, YouTube. If you ever wonder why the camera suddenly shakes, it's usually this is why. Hi, buddy. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Look at this floof. Okay, back to what I was doing. Run program, yes. Okay, so now we're gonna get 30 amps in there. And I want, whoa, okay. That's the voltage going into the battery. That's not the battery voltage. The battery voltage is down here. I was reading this earlier as that was the battery voltage. That was the charge voltage. Once that hits 3.19, thereabouts, I'm stopping. Oh, failing that thing's starting to turn on. 30 amps is a lot for this thing. What I've decided I want to do, if I tried to charge this whole bank up off of this little charger, it would take forever, like absolutely forever. Um, actually, let's do some math. 30 amps at, say, 3.3 volts. Well, it already says 100 watts. So I have 14,300 watts divided by 100. It's 143 hours from zero to full. So it would obviously be less than that because the battery is not down. Ooh, that's really loud. Because the battery is not down that far. So what my current plan is, and I want to start this tonight, which is why I did this to boost this up because it's close to bedtime. If I can get this to about 3.19 volts before bed, I'm going to hook this whole thing up as one big parallel 3.2 volt battery. And then what'll happen is all the cells will equalize overnight. In the morning, well actually morning I go to work. After work tomorrow, I'll turn this back into a 16 amp battery. 16 S 48 volt battery. I have brought this back up from the basement. Obviously it's not set up yet and the other battery is still on the boat, so thanks to my patrons, I had enough money to buy a second shunt. So I don't have the servo with me yet, uh, I'm not going to have it right away, but the point is I can still get this set up to run by itself without the servo to run from the Quattro to the smart shunt to the battery, and I can charge each battery up one by one and record how much power it took to charge them up. Get all six batteries up and running. I'll have all of the batteries recharged, and then the next thing I need to start figuring out is how am I going to fit everything into the boat? I'm going to rip the engine out. Also thanks to the patrons. 
I have a new toy, but we'll talk more about that later. Okay, I'm gonna let this charge up and hopefully get this balancing overnight. I'll bring you back when I'm ready to start getting everything set back up into a 16S 48 volt battery. Good night. Hello. I looked at the shuttle because I realized something. I don't know how long it's gonna take me to get the Quattro set back up. I literally cut the wires when I was pulling everything apart to go onto the boat. And I don't know if I have the right ring terminals. So I've decided, middle of the workday, hence the rush, that I am gonna start charging off the um, X8. Why don't I see where the voltage settled out to? 3.203 volts. It doesn't really matter where I add in the uh, charger, it's, it's gonna spread out. The whole idea is that if I actually do this and finish charging it this way, I want them to balance out so they're all gonna sit and absorb. It's only 30 amps going into this, so I'm not tightening it up too much. Okay, that's on, this is safe. Turn that on, now it's reading the voltage, 30 amp. And here we go. It thinks that it's 20% charged already. I highly, highly, highly doubt that. I probably have to go in here somewhere and set the capacity and I'm not gonna worry about that. It probably thinks the capacity is quite a bit lower. This is now, let's get some ridiculous numbers going here. This is effectively a 4,480 amp hour, 3.2 volt cell. <laughs> gonna take a long time to charge up. It's charging at 107 watts. It's 14.3 kilowatts. But at least now we're punch punching, pumping? We're pumping power into the battery between now and whenever I get the Quattro set back up. Anyways, that was it, back in a bit. So it is the day the next, actually it's quite late in the afternoon or in the evening, I need to get the Quattro up. So I started to set the Quattro up. I even ordered some new bus bars and then realized I was stuck because I don't have my MK3 USB cable, which I need to configure the Quattro because it's on the boat. And this is currently configured for a 20 amp circuit. If I plug it into the wall to start charging this up, I'm gonna pop the breaker. I could take it back downstairs, but I don't wanna. So I wanted to start looking into the iCharger X8 some more. The X8 is that it can do eight in series, which is a 24 volt battery, which means I can still put 30 amps out it's not the watts that sets the limits, it's the amperage that sets the limits. So here I'm putting 30 amps at three point something volts, which is like 100, 115 watts I think it got up to. I can do eight times faster by turning this into a 24 volt, 24 volt battery. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, I have a bit of a problem because I don't have a eight pin, nine pin connector, whatever that is. I need to figure out how to make balance leads for this. This is basically a BMS. So I took out all of the spare wires from the JK BMSs and these leads, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, there we go. These leads are the right size to push onto these pins. Now, obviously I don't want the, I don't want the metal touching and shorting. So I'm gonna have to put a little bit of shrink tubing over it. And then these are just gonna be individual wires going to the eight. It'll be a 2P8S 24 volt battery. So I need eight balance leads. I've got one already. These will be the rest just as single flying leads. Impromptu kitty interlude. Now, behind the scenes, behind Mr. Kepler, you see all of the loose bags and parts. On the boat, everything got chaotic and it all got thrown into a bag or into different bags and boxes and bins and it got to be an absolute mess. So I need to sort through all of this. <laughs> I'm sorry, did I stop paying attention? I know, I'm such a horrible human. Such poor staff. You would fire me if you had an alternative, wouldn't you? Mm, yes, that's what I thought. I need, here we go. These, these should be the right size for these to make my balance leads. So I'm gonna get on to that. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, he doesn't like being picked up. Gotcha. One of the rare times I can pick you up. Anyways, this has nothing to do with the content, so I should get back to it. These are extremely small. Oh gosh. These are such tiny little wires. Okay. Yeah. I can kind of, sort of, thread it on, but I don't want to do that to the threads of the batteries. I might not get very far with this. I still have these that I made way back in the day, but I don't know if I've got the screws for them still. I need back in a minute, I need to find screws for this. All right, it's not ideal, but 
it'll get the job done. So now I have to break apart this 16P 1S battery and turn it into an 8S 2P battery. I'm turning on the camera mostly so that if I screw up, I've got it for you lovely people. All right, now, uh, be positive, there it is. The highest voltage battery has two leads, a balance lead and a positive, which I'm assuming is for powering the electronics on the battery management system. I didn't use that when I was using the eye charger before. I just connected B minus and plus one and it worked. Kind of tempted to just try it without it, see if it works, but it does have minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plus. So I'm gonna try it without connecting that B positive. And if it doesn't work, I'll plug it in. All this because I forgot the MK3 cable on the boat. Oh well, I get to learn something this way. So this now, I've only ever used this as a three volt charger for individual cells. So this is all new to me. Actually, I'm not gonna hook that up yet. Okay, so main pack negative. Uh, shit, this is such a mess. If this doesn't blow off, I'll be so impressed. I should put my spectaculars back on. So green, it's safe. So there's no electrical connection between here and here yet. Quickly check all the bolts that I haven't missed any. Ah, missed one. That's why I always check. All the wires seem to be clear. Okay, let's see if this even still turns on. Okay, that's a good sign. With this off, I now need to go in uh, and set the charge profile overwrite number two. No, don't run it. No, don't run it. I said no, don't run it. Okay, the breaker's off. You know what, I'm gonna unplug this just to be safe. Oh wait, there's another life here. Okay, let's edit this one. It's a great little unit, horrible little mechanical interface. Long hold. I don't think this wheel is working anymore. It's not recognize a long press. It's like I'm constantly pressing it over even though I've got it. Oh, it's not seeing the eighth one. I'm gonna have to plug in that last one anyway. Okay. No goober. Okay, something's wrong with this wheel. Oh, I don't know how I got into it, but there's edit. Okay, cells 8S, okay. Okay, well it's set to 24 volts, so let me get that other pin on there. Actually, it makes sense that I have to have this. How else could it have read the last voltage? Now, the question is, 30 amps at whatever the charge voltage is. Can this power supply put it out? Oh, it's 800 watt power supply. Okay, should be fine. 800 watt, no, it might not be. I might have to set the amperage a bit lower. Wouldn't that be funny? 800 divided by 3.65 times eight is 27. Okay, so this thing maxed out can do 27 amps. So I need to configure this thing to only do 25 amps. That's assuming right at the top of the charge curve, but I don't want to hurt this. So yeah, I gotta, I've got to drop this down. Okay, now it's seeing 26 volts. Where do I set the amperage? I know I've set the amperage before. Ah, here we go. I think I might drop this down to 20 amps. It's crazy that an 800 watt server power supply is what's limiting me here. Okay, so if that's the case, 20 amps times 3.65, which I'm not gonna go to, but anyways, um, times eight is 584. Okay, so that's gonna keep it a fair bit lower and still charge this up at a relatively decent rate. Do I really want to go to 3.55? Maybe 3.5 is enough. I mean, there's so little power left above that. I'm gonna do 3.5. Okay, now I feel more comfortable. Okay, hopefully my finger didn't close, cover too much of that. I'm gonna plug this in, breaker on. Server power supply is spinning up. 400 watts going in. I can go to 25 amps. Oh, but it's charging at 26 amps. Hmm. Can I go higher? You know what? Let's not be greedy. I've already just gone up by a factor of four on my charge speed. 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2, 3.2. With a delta V of nine. Delta V, that's a spaceship thingy. With a system voltage of 26. Temperature is 41 degrees. I'm gonna let this run. There's some heat coming out of there. This is at 47 degrees. Yeah, this is throttling for its own temperature. Oh no, this is interesting. I'm seeing a little... Is it balancing? Ah, 
I see what's going on. So you can see the temperature is at 71 degrees Celsius. The fan is running full power. I'm assuming this is smart enough. I set the temperature to 45 degrees. So I'm going to assume this is going to take care of itself, but I'm kind of tempted now to stop this and cut that down to a 10 amp charger. I don't know what the bar graphs are beside each of the cells. 3.3 is really low, 3.3 is really low, 3.305, okay, so I think these bar graphs are just a quick visual way to say what's the individual voltage of each cell relative to all the others. So I can see there's an 11 millivolt difference between the highest and the lowest cell, which isn't too bad. It's high, definitely, but it's not super bad. That's 71 degrees Celsius, though. That does worry me. But again, I'm assuming this charger's smart enough to reduce its output if it starts to get too hot. But I'll definitely not leave this charging unattended. At 400 watts, that's four times faster, this is 14,300 watts total capacity divide by 400 is 35 hours. Still a long time to charge a battery, but a heck of a lot better than 100 and some hours it was before. I'm gonna sit here and watch this for a bit, but that's really boring, so I'll bring you back when I've got something more to say. Hello from the boat. I had planned to show you everything I was doing, but a storm is coming and I'm losing my light very quickly, so I've just been in a mad rush. I'm about to leave the boat, so let me show you what I've done. I don't even have my lights with me, so this is gonna be, uh, extremely low production quality. So I got a carload full of cushions out. I got the uh, Victron Servo screen, the color 50 or whatever it is, out. And I've got the Servo out. So I'm leaving the old smart shunt so I can still check on the status of the batteries. Plus the BMSs are on. I need to pull the batteries out, but I don't have enough time to do it today. And I have no space left in the car anyway. So this trip was just to steal enough parts in order to be able to finish setting up the 48 volt back at the house. <laughs> do, 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 do. Let's get a light on. Oh, that's too bright now. Now I look like a ghost. <laughs> so normally I'd rather go slow and show you everything I'm doing. Sorry for the rush. It's just the way it worked out. I'll explain more for you. Okay, this is more comfortable. Sorry for the mad rush at the boat. And I thought about just buying another MK3 cable or adapter thingy, but they're like a hundred bucks, Canadian dollars. So yeah, I decided just to go down to the boat and do a run, filled the car up with cushions and various other knickknacks. And I pulled out the MK3 cable and the Serbo GX. But getting back now to the battery, I have what I need to get the Quattro back online. Now, since all of this started, I reached out to Amy, my, the person I worked with when I was buy, buying all of the batteries from QSO, and I explained, hey, listen, one of my cells dropped two volts. I'm not sure if, what the deal is. It looks like it's toast, and I didn't get a response. Not initially. Um, I'll explain why in a second. So I messaged Andy and said, hey, look what happened. More like a... You know, shit sucks, what can you do, right, kind of thing. And he was the one who was saying, yeah, this is fine, don't worry about it, charge it back up, it's probably good. Now, after I reached out to Andy and he told me that, Amy got back to me and said, listen, we're all on vacation, it's a holiday time in China right now. And I'm like, look, no rush, I'm gonna do a test, get back to me when the holiday's over. While I was down on the boat, she messaged me. So when I got home, I messaged her back. She was just saying, can you explain to me what happened? I explained to her what happened. And without me saying anything, she was like, no worries, we'll get you a replacement out right away. I told her to hold off because Andy said that the battery might be fine, which a lot of this is repeat from what I said earlier in the video, but for me, it's been several days. So now with that the I've got everything I need to get the Quattro back online. I've been trying to charge off the iCharger, even with this setup, it's just taken forever to charge. Um, I'm gonna pull the SD card to see how much I put into it. I think I've got about eight kilowatt hours into this and it's still not full. So I'm thinking the battery is pretty close to dead anyway. Regardless, I need to get this thing charged up and I need to do a discharge test. I will see if cell 12 is the first one to drop off and wherever it drops off, we'll say, 
you know, say it's at 250 amp hours, when it drops down below and shuts off the BMS, okay, battery's toast, I need to get it replaced. And I told Amy, if that's the case, I'll get back to her and I'll take her up on the swap. If it pulls the full 280 amp hours, I'm not gonna ask for it to be replaced. All right, that's caught up from what was happening on the boat. I need to get back to work. So right now, this is wired up to the solar panels, to the breaker panels, and to the um, AC output, but it is not wired into the battery. So this battery is still set up as a 12, 24 volt battery. I've got to reconfigure it 48 volt and tie it into this, which means I also need to find, if I have any leftover four gauge black, I, I'm running desperately low on wire right now. Um, anyways, I'll, I'll sort that out. Key point is, I can plug this into the wall right now, and even though it's set to pull 17 or 18 amps from the wall, it's got nothing to pull that much power for because it's not connected to the batteries. So, I've got the OTP cable here. Get this plugged in. Unplug the charger and plug in the Quattro. Turn it on, and now we wait. The Multi Plus, the Multi Quattro is running a version, firmware version that is not fully supported by Victron Connect. Update Victron Connect to the latest available version to enable settings. What? What? I've got the latest version of Victron Connect. I... I guess I have some homework to do. Why is this not saying maintenance on? What? Oh, now it's blinking. Ah! Okay, this is different. So before, there was no lights on at all. I'm wondering if the error message I was seeing on the screen was not actually the real problem. Wait, what is it trying to do? What is it trying to charge? Why is it? Okay, it's gone to absorption. Yeah, because there's no batteries here. There's n Fetching settings. Okay, something was wrong when I turned it to on and not charger only, it wasn't happy. Now I can configure things. That was weird. I expect less weirdness from Victron. Okay, AC input was set to 19. I'm gonna set this to 14 amps. Now I can use this to charge this. All of this was waiting for me to be able to make that one change. I really wish I could set this uh, without the MK3 cable over USB. I don't know why the Quattro and the Multi Plus, which is not that old. I only bought this two years, a year ago, whenever it was. Why can't I configure this without spending another hundred dollars? Ugh, whatever. Okay. Great. This is configured now. I'm going to turn this back off. Oh, and the smart solars, they woke up because they were getting power from this. Now that this is off, these are probably going to disappear as well. Oh, neat. You can actually see the voltage dropping out of this as the capacitor is discharged. 39, 38, 37. I wonder at what point these are going to disappear. They're set for 12 volts, so probably when is... This is totally unrelated, but I find it fascinating. I bet you when it gets to about 10 volts, these will shut off. Oh, this is fascinating! <laughs> 16, 15, how low will it go? 10, 9, 8... Okay, you're going to disappear now, aren't you? They're still going! They're still alive! I, do they have their own internal capacitors? How are they still going? The brake, I mean, it's nighttime, but the solar breakers are off. Uh, 4.42, they've stopped updating. I think they're off now. Fascinating! Okay, now I need to pull these apart and turn it back into a 48 volt battery, set up the BMS, and figure out how to wire these in. How I assemble all of these is something I have covered in intricate detail in past videos. I'm going to just kind of breeze through this and I'll show you when it's done. If you're curious about how all of this is configured, I encourage you to look at my older videos. Not to say that my current videos are the best editing quality, my older ones were even worse, but that's okay. The whole channel's purpose is to show about learning in everything, including YouTube videos. All right, so now the battery is built up to here. The last thing I need to do now is to get the other end of this connector connected to these bus bars. And for that, I need to go steal some more parts from downstairs. So I have main pack positive, T-class fuse, disconnect switch, Anderson connector, negative to P minus to battery minus to 
the battery. I checked all the balance leads, it's all good. I don't have the start switch, I need the start switch. Okay, now the BMS is connected and ready to go. BMS negative, so this negative goes to the shunt, shunt to the negative bus bar. This positive is going straight to here. This is in the off position. I just checked everything. I think it's okay, I think. Let's start by turning on the BMS. This is off, so even if this comes on, it should be fine. Let me start a recording again. BMS is coming on, there's battery F. Let's look at how everything looks. It's idea of the state of charge is gonna be totally skewed. Are you gonna connect? There it goes. All right, it's still set to 280 amp hours. Average cell voltage is 3.345. Charge is on, discharge on, balance is off. Right, because that's what I was testing was the different balance current settings. If discharge is on, let's unplug the Quattro from the wall so it's isolated. When I turn this on, all of the devices should light up. There we go. I saw the screen flash. Oh, oh, damn it. I forgot to use the pre-charge resistor and it drew too much power from here when I tried to turn this on. Okay, damn it. It detected a short circuit because the capacitors in the Quattro are so powerful. The way to fix that is I pull this cable off and I run it through, I run it through my pre-charge resistor. Oh God, I've forgotten to do that so many times. And when I was reading up on the manual for the motor controller, it's saying that if I make that mistake with the motor controller, I could blow it. So I really have to get better at remembering this. So the idea behind the pre-charge resistor is that inside of this thing, inside of the Quattro are very large capacitors. Capacitors are like batteries that charge and discharge extremely quickly. So when I turned on the BMS, when I connected the BMS, this thing tried to pull so much current to charge up the capacitors, this thing thought it was a dead short and shut off the BMS, which is exactly what it should have done. So now that this is off, what you do is by connecting this to a resistor first and then touching this to the positive bus bar, this throttles basically how much power can go through. So it will still charge up the capacitors, but it has to do it at a fairly slow rate takes about 10 seconds, but it means that this thing won't think it's gone into a short circuit. So discharge is on. Okay, so this is back on now. I turn this on again, and this becomes live at 48 volts with ridiculous current carrying capacity. So I have to be very careful now. Stick that onto here, and I touch one, two, three, four, ten. 10. Take this off, connect this before the capacitor discharges. me. Okay. Um, what happened there? I, I smoked the hell out of that. I don't know what I did there. I went through the resistor. Minus four amps, minus two amps, zero amps. Okay, I guess I just was too slow and I allowed the capacitors to discharge. <sighs> that was frightening. That was, that was very frightening. Add it to the blooper reel. All right. I'm gonna plug the Quattro in and see if that starts charging because really that's what all of this was about because I would just wanna get this battery charged. All right. Charger only. This should come on now. Why did this turn off? Why did this turn off? Okay, well, it's up now. Okay, it's charging. You can see I've got 23, 25 amps going in. Now I just let this try and finish charging. I'm tired. I, that major spark scared me. I think I'm gonna call it a night now, so I will see you in the morning. Well, I mean, for you. So since I set this up back as a 16 cell 48 volt battery and started charging off the Quattro, I noticed that 
almost immediately a couple of the cells went into high voltage cutoff. And I thought, oh, okay, well, it must have been pretty close to full. And it was. So I pulled the SD card out of the X8 and parsed the data, and I'll put this here. When I was charging up the individual cell 12 to bring it back up, I put 54 watt hours into it. And then after that, between charging it as one long um, 3.2 volt battery and then switching it to a 24 volt battery combined, I put, this is a long chart, another 13.3 kilowatt hours into the battery. So between the two of them, it's 13.36 kilowatt hours have gone into this off the X8. If you recall, these tests are around 14.3 kilowatt hours, so it was pretty darn empty. Now, so let me start a screen record. Going into the smart shunt and using both the charge and discharge, because this was never discharged, what it's thinking is a discharge was because I had the shunt backwards. Cumulatively, I've had 0.9 kilowatt of hours go into the battery. So if I add 0.9, to the 13.3, I'm at 14.2. I am leaving this thing just to finish topping up. I actually came up here with the intention of tearing this part and making it into a 3.2 and doing a big parallel top balance again. But I don't think I need to. So cell seven and eight, and what was it? Uh, 13 and 14 have been at 3.5 volts while all the others are still sitting at 3.35 volt. And it's been balancing since last night. It can't be far from being full because again, the total capacity is like 14.3. So I think I'm just gonna leave it be. I guess I'll leave it until tomorrow. So it is Friday and finally this pack is top balanced. If I look at the total amount of power that has gone into the battery since I brought it back up, starting with charging from the iCharger and then adding in the power coming in from the Quattro, it's more than 14.3 kilowatt hours, which is what we tested the capacity for these things to be. Exactly how much? I don't know right now, I have to add it up. It's showing that since I set up the Quattro, 1.7 kilowatt hours have gone in. Now, it hit high voltage disconnect almost as soon as I set up the Quattro. So it was close to full charge, but it was badly out of balance. I am pretty sure that it didn't fall out of balance because of the parasitic load test, first of all. I had it as a single 16P1S 3.2 volt battery for a couple of days. Now it was at a very low voltage and maybe it was such a, because the batteries were basically dead, maybe it was too low that they could really balance well amongst each other. But regardless, that should have brought them pretty close to the same state of charge. So I was charging initially off this, well off this as a single 3.2 volt battery and then we switched it to the 8S 24 volt configuration, 8S 2P and let it charge up for a good while on this. As I was charging this thing back up off the Quattro, once it was set back up as a 48 volt battery, cells were reaching 3.5, which was the high voltage cutoff in pairs. So I think for example, I have to look at the previous footage I recorded, I don't have a great memory, but I believe it was like 13, 14 hit limits and then seven, eight hit, a, hit the limit and then one, two hit the limit, but it was always hitting them in pairs. So I think this thing was trying to balance the cells and doing a really bad job at it. Not that I'm complaining for what this thing is, it's fantastic for the money, but a good balancing BMS it does not seem to be. I wish now in hindsight that as soon as this hit the first high voltage disconnect, the first cell pair hit 3.5 volts, that I had immediately stopped it, turned this back into a single 3.2 volt battery and use this to top balance it like I did in the past, that would have given me a better view of how much power went into this pack to charge it back up. The total number right now is well above the 14.3 that this thing should be able to carry and I believe that's because of waste. For the last four or five days, I've just allowed the BMS to top balance, which means it takes a little bit of charge cuts off and then starts, starts pulling power out of the high cells and dumping into the low cells. Because it's going through a capacitor, I believe this is a very inefficient process. So the reason I think I got more power into the battery than it should be able to hold is because of this very slow process of briefly charge, balance, briefly charge, balance for like five days. So the biggest takeaway is that 
This pack, I believe, was absolutely and totally drained of power. Even though the individual cells were showing 3.2 volts, we've seen in the past that by the time it actually falls off the cliff, the 3.2 volt starts to drop down, there's virtually no power there whatsoever. So cell 12 was the first one that actually bottomed out, but I don't think there was a lot less than the, left in the rest. Now, I'm still concerned that cell 12 is damaged, so in the next video, we're gonna do a capacity test to see whether this thing still pulls capacity. QSO was willing to offer me a replacement right away. Um, I reached out to them before I spoke to Andy and Andy was like, oh no, it should be fine, just charge it back up. So in the next video, we're gonna test Andy's theory and I mean, it's Andy, he's probably right. But the fact that this took so much power tells me that it actually probably does have the capability to hold the full charge, even though it got to 2.0 volts. Um, I'm really, really, really keen to find out. So for you next video, for me, starting tomorrow, I'm gonna to start a discharge test on this. Till then, thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed it, could I ask you to do the usual YouTube thingamajigs and uh, do the, the like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff because it really does help. I'm Digital Mermaid and I'm really excited now to see how much power is still left in this. See you next time.